Hello and welcome to my How To Plumbing YouTube channel. My name is Claude Taylor. For those of you that know me, welcome back. Those that don't, I hope you enjoy the video. And if you do, give it a thumbs up and become a subscriber. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna get started on this uh, water heater. Um, this is not a customer, this is a friend, actually a family member. Um, the issue they were having, the water heater would not light. And of course, I've done hundreds of these, so when they told me I knew exactly what it was. He ordered the part, got the part in, and now I am here to um, install the part for him. Uh, the brand of water heater this is, this is a state water heater. That's the name brand of this water heater. And I do have two other videos out here. Uh, one covering a Rheem gas water heater. Uh, same problem. And another covering the uh, a Bradford White water heater. Same issue. Um, almost the same operating system except for a few uh, changes on the uh, safety device. And the safety device that I'll show you on this one is much different than the uh, Bradford White Areem. They have actually have a small little capacitor on the uh, thermal coupling that actually goes bad when the uh, water heater is either overheated or smothered with a uh, lack of oxygen. Once we get this apart and we start working on it, I'll show you that part. And right now, I know I'm using a uh, crescent wrench to take these uh, bolts off. Uh, I do have a nut driver that fits that. Uh, just right now, I'm too lazy to run down to the truck and get it, but I will go get it because I'm going to have to go back down anyway. But for now, we can just, we can just get this burner out of the way. And you can see me struggle with this a little bit. Uh, the area in this attic that I'm working in is very tight. I'm only like three feet from the the opening. If I'm not careful, I can fall right down the uh, ladder and hurt myself. So I have to work real careful right here in this spot. And right now it's a little early, so it's kind of not too hot, but I can feel the uh, temperature starting to rise. And that's the uh, bracket that was holding it in place. You can see the uh, gas is off. As long as the uh, handle is facing the opposite way of the uh, pipe, it's off. And we're going to remove the gas flex line. to cut the water to the uh, hot water tank off see it's so tight up in here I can I can't really even stand up so I have to do my best to get the camera in there to get a picture of the uh, cutoff valve uh, I won't be able to show you myself cutting it off but um, I'll show you after it's cut off Okay, right there, it's off. As long as the uh, handle's facing the opposite, uh, opposite way of the pipe, it's off. And with that, we're going to relieve the pressure from the tank. Now we relieve the pressure, and there's no air in the tank, so that when we go to remove the uh, gas control valve, we don't have to worry about water shooting out. We will get a small amount, because the tank is full. But uh, we're not going to get a heavy rush of water. It'll just kind of bloop bloop out of here. So it'll give us enough time to remove this and put the other one in place. But 
if you feel safer draining the whole tank to uh, remove it, I mean, by all means, go for it. I've been doing this quite a few times, uh, like I said, hundreds of times, so I'm pretty familiar with it and check it real close myself. And I'm using the uh, sponge. I'm pulling it down here in the uh, um, combustion area opening because, like I said, a little water will come out, and I don't want any going into the air uh, the combustion chamber or on the bottom of the tank uh, so we're trying to do this job as neat as I can and without getting water everywhere and this is the uh, new gas control valve and you can see it comes with uh, Teflon tape already on it so we don't have to uh, Teflon it up or pipe dope it we're good and now that I've uh, loosened the uh, gas control valve with the uh, the gas pipe I used it as a tool to remove it to uh, loosen it now I can loosen it with my hand. I'm going to take it right off and we're going to uh, put the new one in right away. You'll see a small amount of water right there. That's about it. Screw it in and we're good. And now the uh, gas pipe that we took off the old one, we're going to put it on this one and we're going to use it as our tool as our wrench to put this back on here and tighten it back down I do that I'm going I, I did put some uh, true blue that's what the uh, pipe dope is called that I use true blue it's really good and strong and seals the pipe uh, nicely see how I use the leverage of the gas piping to twist the valve in place and tighten it down and that pss, that was me Well, you see right here, uh, I'm going to use my uh, channel lock pliers to tighten the uh, flex gas flex line down. But what you don't see, I wasn't able to show you, is I did use backup, uh, another wrench to hold it steady to really get it tight uh, and sealed. Uh, again, like I said, I'm working in such a tight area. Um, if there's anything on this video that I might have missed it wasn't intentionally and I apologize and if you have any questions or comments leave them below as a matter of fact what do you think of water heaters in the attic good idea bad idea
you can see where it's cracked right there this is part of the uh, thermal coupling which is different than any other water heater that I know of other than state and once that's cracked we know that it's damaged and here's the new one sealed nicely and tight again this is the thermal coupling uh, a lot of you out there that are familiar with thermal couplings you know that this don't exist on them only on state water heater that is what they use as their safety device to shut the water heater down in case any uh, any problems arrive and if you see the other videos the ream and the uh, Bradford white you'll see that they have their own type of safety device one is uh, those are not connected to the thermal coupling you uh, probably notice that uh, I'm starting to breathe a little heavier uh, it's the uh, day is coming on it's starting to get a little warmer out um, and actually I haven't been up here that long it's just that the uh, temperatures starting to rise rather quickly here Now, um, again, I've done this, you know, quite a few times, hundreds of times. Um, so I do remember where a lot of the parts uh, go. Um, but if you're uh, hesitant and not sure of once you, uh, before you take anything apart, that you're not, you're not going to remember uh, where it went. All I do when I get to a point like that is I just, um, I take a picture of it. And when I start putting it back together, if I get lost, I'll just look at the picture and it shows me where I'm at. So that's just a little, uh, a little advice. Thanks to technology, we can use our phones to do that. This, um, this main burner right here that I'm holding right there in the hand, if you look at it, 
is no more different than the uh, burners you have on a cook stove where you place a pot and you're cooking things and basically that is what this is this is a burner and the water heater is a large pot that sits on top of it and once it gets to a certain temperature uh, depending on where you set it it cuts off automatically and once the pressure of the water drops of course this kicks right back on so those of you that uh, hear that popping sound in your water heaters when it goes to kick back on it's nothing more than a bunch of calcium on the bottom of the uh, tank itself the large pot let's call it a large pot it's just like putting um, overcooked rice on your stove uh, and you put water in there and it starts to heat up you start hearing it popping uh, same difference and they do recommend that you flush your water heater once a year um, me personally I think if you if you don't do it once a year um, you're asking for trouble because if you start doing it three four years down the line and you uh, cut it on uh, you may have issues with the uh, calcium buildup so as soon as you get the water heater you want to start that yearly process the little brass piece you see right there that's called an orifice. You have to have that on there. If you, this one is made for natural gas. If you ever need to convert your water heater to propane, you can change that orifice out, and uh, that will allow you to change to different type of gas. You can really see it's getting hot up here. I'm uh, actually looking at the, uh, as I'm editing this, I'm looking at the uh, sweat coming off of me. And Also, tankless water heaters. Leave a comment below. What do you think? Uh, do you like tankless water heaters or the conventional one like we're working on right here, right now? The pros and cons. Now, the little red one right there where my thumb is, that little red rubber piece right there, that's called a grommet. And we're going to 
it's kind of hard squeezing that grommet into place but once it's in place it's good because it keeps the uh, combustion area nice and sealed tight so that um, this is actually designed to keep um, gases from flowing out the uh, bottom of the tank if you remember the old um, water heaters they didn't you can get access easily right to the bottom but now they they've sealed the uh, bottom and you can't get access unless you do what I'm doing here and take it all out okay now we got that grommet in place and usually when they send it in the box the new parts the uh, grommet is in the spot where it needs to be so don't mess around trying to adjust it and that's just another rubber piece similar to the grommet again just to uh, keep the bottom sealed and again it's really hard for me to try to bend over and get a bird's eye view of this because there's no room there's no room for me to actually I can but it's very uncomfortable <laughs> now I'm trying to get in a position where I can get a better a better uh, angle and make it a little easier to work with getting this in here I'm trying to get it up over the uh, bracket that's uh, in there but I can't actually like I said I can't see it And you definitely want to uh, get it in the bracket so that it could rest properly right up under the uh, tank like it should. Don't just try to put it in there any other kind of way. Make sure it's in the bracket that it belongs in. And okay, this time I have my uh, I have my nut driver with me. Actually, this is like a uh, eight-way screwdriver. It has so many different parts to it: the flat head, Phillip head, um, five sixteenths nut driver, another nut driver, and it actually even has some star wrench parts on it. So it's a really good uh, screwdriver. And that's, you just heard, that's me turning the water back onto the uh, tank. And I usually, I turn the water on before I finish. Uh, just in case there's any issues uh, while I'm working on the tank I'll be able to uh, address it the middle one right there where you see my hand that is the uh, main burner uh, that's where all the gas goes to the main burner This one here, the one right there that I'm getting ready to hook up, that goes to the pilot. That's the gas to the uh, pilot that keeps it lit. 
and all of these tubings you want to be careful as you uh, bend it so that you don't kink it and cut off any uh, gas supply to the uh, unit so you just kind of bend it slowly the same with the uh, thermal coupling And the thermal coupling is the one that we're going to put on next. And here's the thermal coupling. And the purpose of the thermal coupling it's um it's actually a current that runs through the thermal coupling electrical current that runs through there uh, once the pallet is lit the pallet burns up against the thermal coupling and that causes the thermal coupling to create a small current of electricity that operates the uh, gas control valve itself and that's the purpose of the uh, thermal coupling so when you do go to light a water heater you always hold the uh, you hold the um, gas supply down for at least a minute or so it allows the thermal coupling to generate some um, electrical current to uh, control the gas valve and once that's current gets to going it's automatically on its own and this is another thing that could prevent your water heater from being lit if you have a thermal coupling that is not tightly connected up in top into the control valve here's the old one so what I'm gonna do with the old one I'm gonna take the old igniter because the uh, New assembly didn't come with a uh, a niter uh, switch. Okay, the um, new control valve is a little different, but that's not a problem. We're just going to squeeze it, the uh, igniter switch. I'm going to squeeze the bracket so it'll get a little snug in place up here. And now we're going to connect the um, igniter wire that sparks the light into the uh, chambers of the water heater. And again, this is another thing that you would like to check. If you can't light your water heater, if there's not a connection here, you're not going to get the water heater to light. So just pull back this little rubber piece that I'm pulling over and check the connection. It's very rare that that happens, but it does. Okay, the gas is back on, and what I'm doing here is holding the uh, gas knob down, allowing a little gas to get in the chamber, and now I just click the uh, igniter five or six times real fast, and that should get it lit. Normally, uh, in this case, I would look through the glass to see if it's lit. But again, there's no room for me to hold this and look down in there. So we're just going to hold it for a minute and hope that it's lit. And again, while we hold it, the reason we hold it in place for a minute, hold it down, is so that the uh, pilot light can burn against the thermal coupling and generate enough current 
to keep it going on its own. Okay. Good. It's lit. Now the main burner's on. And they're set. I'm going to uh, take this camera and I'm going to kind of pan the little area that I was working in to give you an idea uh, how tight the space was. You can see it right there. It's probably no more than three feet to the edge. So I can easily fell it over if I wasn't careful and right down here and that wouldn't have been good. And you can see how when I stood up that flexible duck was right there at my head and I couldn't get hardly get into there to uh, cut the water heater off. Again, my name's Claude Taylor. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're not a subscriber, become one. Thank you. And if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Thank you. Have a great day.
because some plumbers, like I said, they don't even know um, the operations of the uh, warranty on the water heater. Okay, now we've disconnected the uh, wires and the uh, supply tubing and the thermal coupling. So the control valve up on top is uh, disconnected as far as electronic goes. Is a uh, we call it a four-way screwdriver. It's actually six-way. Um, you have two ends where you have a flathead. Uh, each side is a uh, different size flathead. Then you have uh, another side that has Phillips, which has a small Phillips and a big Phillips. And then when you remove the uh, bits, you have a nut driver, which is what I'm using now. And this is a standard nut driver. It just fits to the uh, nuts that we're about to pull off of here to remove the uh, cover to the uh, burner assembly. So if your uh, water heater is brand white and it's still up in the warranty, make sure that you don't have a plumber come in here and tell you you need a new water heater. Check the brand white. And on the uh, descriptions below, I'll put the information to Bradford White, 1 800 number, and a little more information that might help. And um, this is also going to be on the information, uh, the description, I'm sorry, is um, uh, let me explain right now. I am working in an attic, and uh, this is down in the uh, Texas, out of parts of Houston, and, and of course you know Houston, Texas gets, gets very hot, and so you can see the sweat, um, and in the attic right now it's probably, I don't know, close to 90 to 100 degrees, and it can get much hotter than this, and a lot of manufacturers, water heater manufacturers, they actually don't recommend that uh, these water heaters or any water heater uh, is put in the attic. Um, the reason being is because they have a safety shutoff. If the uh, water heater, the temperature gets so high uh, for your safety, it would automatically cut the water heater off to prevent any uh, explosion of the water heater, which is possible with uh, too much heat. assembly inside. Um, these are the parts that uh, we got from um, Bradford White. Uh, you can't get it anywhere but from uh, Bradford White or any Bradford White dealer. So you might want to check around this particular one. I call the parts uh, plumber supply house that carries Bradford White parts and all I had to do is take the uh, serial number off the water heater, um, the make and model, and give them the uh, tags, and they just gave me a free um, replacement kit to replace it. Uh, most people that deal with Bradford Whites, they're familiar with the operation, so this is what happened here. Okay, now we, uh, we've we removed the uh, burner assembly. I 
the way I do this is uh, I actually do not drain the water heater, but uh, anybody that may be unexperienced, I would probably recommend draining your water heater. Uh, what I actually do is uh, cut the water to the water heater off and then flip the relief tube up at top to relieve some pressure from the water heater itself so that uh, when I do remove the uh, control valve on the side here, the water doesn't come rushing out. It'll just kind of blurp out a little bit because there's no air in, air in the tank to uh, allow it to just flow freely out as fast as uh, it could. And this is something I do, and I do it pretty quick. So you'll see me do this. Um, I guess... first things we're going to do now, after we got to the burner assembly out, is we're going to disconnect the uh, gas line. Now I know uh, there's certain areas um, of the country, but not here, that the uh, gas line, like you see this flexible gas line here, it's not uh, code approved, but here uh, it is. Um, which makes it a little easy and convenient, so it took me some time to get used to it. I was so used to uh, running a black iron pipe uh, in other parts of the country where it's required you have to have a solid black iron pipe connection. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this uh, adapter back on here, this uh, flared nut uh, iron pipe, uh, half inch to uh, half inch uh, gas flared nut. These wires, um, uh, I've been doing it quite, a, you know, quite a while, so I'm real familiar with how they go back together. Uh, but uh, if you're someone that's doing this project and you're not sure about where those wires would go, I would just take pictures of it before you take it apart, and that way you can always look in your phone and just put it back just the way it was. This is the uh, new control valve you see right here, and what I'm doing with that is I am preparing it so that I can quickly put it back in place of the uh, the old one as soon as I pull this one out so too much water doesn't come out. So right here, let's go, I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen this gas line up right now, just loosen it, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use this gas line as a, a wrench to turn off the, uh, to twist off the uh, gas control valve. See, now I have some leverage to get this. So what I'm going to do is just going to loosen it up and then pull the uh, gas tubing off, pipe off, and then I can, from there I, can, I would, I'll be able to uh, turn it with my hand. This is what I was talking about, relieving the pressure from the water heater. Now it's still filled with water, but as long as there's no water in the tank, it's not going to rush out at you. It's just going to be like a boop, boop, boop. You'll see.
you know, um, now we're speaking on uh, Bradford White water heaters. The thing I like, I guess, most about the Bradford water heaters is it actually tells you what's wrong with it uh, when you, there's a light on there and it gives you signals and you just decode the signals from the information that they give you on the side and uh, that uh, tells you what's wrong with the uh, water heater. Okay, here's the box. This is the new uh, gas control valve. that they send all of the uh, necessary components that you need to uh, completely, actually just completely rebuild it. Okay, of course you know what this is, the gas control valve. This controls the temperature of the uh, water heater. It controls everything, so the water heater tends to overheat. This will automatically cut it off. that will be connecting to the uh, burner assembly. And this part here, you, I wouldn't even worry about it. I uh, used to use that part to uh, try to diagnose uh, water heater problems because if you connect the uh, leads together, it'll keep the uh, pilot lit actually, but I wouldn't recommend doing that just for testing purposes. Okay, we're taking the old one off. As you see, small amount of water come out, and the tank is completely full. I'm just going to screw this in real quick. Okay, now we're good. building the rest of the uh, components.
way this uh, control uh, gas control valve it's uh, it's not battery operated it's actually controlled by the uh, fire that comes from the uh, pilot light itself uh, that's the uh, importance of a uh, thermal coupling because when the uh, flames from the pilot itself is uh, heating um, and burning fire up against the thermal coupling, it um, causes the uh, thermal coupling to generate a, just a small amount of electricity that keeps everything operating. This is why when you do go to uh, like the uh, water heater, this is why you have to hold the button down for about a minute. We have to give the uh, thermal coupling a chance to uh, start generating a small amount of electricity to uh, keep the rest of the components operating. And now I'm just taking this uh, setup, which is the thermal coupling, the pilot light, and the striker off of the uh, burner assembly itself. days is gone by now. You can have the old thermal coupling and you just pull one out and put it in. These water heaters have uh, changed a lot. here. And, I mean, it was hot and 
I mean, it's good to see this video because you're going to run into this now and then, so it's not going to always be easy. I've had something to go right in. Uh, this, is, this is one of the few that I've had a problem with. And it's just getting that tubing set just right. And sometimes the issue is that the, uh, the new uh, gas control valve, it's not exactly like the old one, so that, it could be a small small millimeter that just throws it off and so you have to kind of mess with the tubing to kind of straighten it out or even you may have to just bend it to get it uh, to fit just right to sort of screw up in there.
key. This little button here, once you push it in, uh, it'll allow gas to uh, go out to the uh, burners so that we can uh, relight the uh, water heater. But we're going to, uh, let's go ahead and uh, connect the, uh, 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 this wire here. It goes to the uh, thermal coupling. If you remember the older water heaters, well, even some of the newer ones today, they, some of them, depending on the brand, they do still have the copper um, wire that goes from the uh, control valve down to the thermal coupling. But uh, this is something that I guess Bradford White came out with. That's why you can't run out and just buy a standard uh, thermal coupling. And the reason I'm holding this button down, the red button here on top, is as I'm putting this together, I'm letting um, the gas kind of float through to kind of uh, clear the line out, get some of the air out of there. gas on and we're opening the um, gas valve at the control valve itself uh, before we light it I'm getting the uh, air out the line some more air out the nice uh, feature about this uh, Bradford White is you don't have to uh, bend over and look real hard and through the window to make sure that the uh, water heater is uh, lit you just, uh, when you hold this down and you click the clicker, that square red button right there, yeah, that button right there, that uh, square red one, that's the uh, igniter that uh, when you click it, uh, yes, when you click it, uh, it will spark a fire down in the burner. And of course, that fire, as the gas is going through, will ignite the gas. And once we've got it held, uh, long enough, um, we'll know that the uh, pilot is completely lit and will stay on once we see the uh, green light flashing right there. You just seen it, the green light flash. There it is. So now we know that the uh, pilot is lit, and we can actually uh, relieve the button right now. Uh, as I said, one of the other good things about this. Um, valve of the electronic is that uh, the water heater itself will tell you what's wrong with it and on the side of the water heater there's a panel with information and directions on how to relight your water heater so uh, and how to diagnose the problem that you're having
everyone and welcome in this video uh, we'll be covering uh, how to repair the uh, water heater that's uh, not able to uh, light uh, so that it can produce some hot water I've done a video similar to this but it was a different water heater it was a Bradford white and this one here is a ream water heater although they both uh, operate in a similar manner they do have some components that are different and this particular one here this ream uh, it'll throw you for a loop uh, if you're not familiar with it at first uh, I wasn't going to uh, put this video out because I felt you know there was quite a few water heater repairs out there on uh, you know water heaters not relighting but one of my colleagues ran into a problem and he had the same water heater and he called me and he said hey man I've done everything I could to uh, get this water heater to working. I replaced the uh, pilot assembly, the gas control valve, nothing. Uh, and that moment I asked him, I said, hey, what, what, what kind of water heater are you working with? And he told me it's a ream. And right away, I knew uh, the problem. And I asked him, is there a, did you see a glass tubing in the uh, combustion chamber? He said, no, I didn't see that. I said, well, you may not have to have it. Probably, uh, more than most likely, it burst. And you'll probably see glass fragments uh, on the uh, bottom of it. But anyway, he was surprised at the fact of that. So I did go over there to uh, give him a hand. And so happened, um, the uh, supply house gave him the parts that he needed. But he didn't realize that the little glass tubing that held a little oil in it uh, was the uh, problem. And when that little glass tube pops, it holds the device in place. Uh, once it's popped, it releases that device, and that device shuts down the water heater. And that's only when the uh, water heater is overheated and the uh, burner is starting to burn out wide well anyway this is what we're going to do first of all we're going to remove the uh, cover for the uh, pilot assembly the uh, and the uh, burner and the, I guess I was talking at the beginning and you didn't probably didn't notice the uh, star wrench uh, that I'm using and it was a t20 I believe the size that uh, re that's required to remove these uh, screws and ream water heater the, uh, wrench the others use the uh, small little nut drivers and they do make these star wrenches where they're where they do have a handle just like the uh, screwdriver and it's a lot easier to work with but the uh, this is pretty handy and I keep all different sizes with this little um, little setup that I have here. And one of the first things we want to do once we uh, remove our burner is kind of examine the inside of the uh, combustion chamber. We want to make sure that the uh, 
combustion chamber is uh, clear of uh, debris and dust uh, because if you have uh, quite a bit of dust accumulated it'll uh, cause problems and keep your water heater from lighting uh, because it will remove the uh, oxygen from the air it'll kind of smother it and of course if you have any flame it's going to need oxygen so we want to keep as much oxygen flowing into the uh, combustion area as we possibly can and in this case the oxygen is coming from up under the bottom of the water heater you can't see it but it is and this water heater here is in the uh, attic I know a lot of you people out there are not familiar with water heaters being in the attic unless you're uh, you do live down south where the temperatures are warm um, there are issues with uh, water heaters being in the attic I mean the idea of having them up there it's pretty good uh, because of the energy that it saves but at the same time uh, if your attic is not vented properly you will have issues because you'll have insufficient air getting into the chambers and this will choke the fire. And like I was saying, the insufficient air in the attic will uh, it will cause the, uh, the flames up underneath to uh, choke out and what I'm doing here is just kind of uh, taking a little pin and there's some little holes and I'm trying to poke the holes um, through the uh, where some of this uh, oil from the uh, little crystal that popped in there just kind of clearing it up and free some of the uh, holes up and below there will be a description or uh, URL to a website explaining um, issues with water heaters in the uh, attic. Uh, I'd recommend you probably check that out if you have a water heater in the attic and you'll you'll have a clearer understanding of water heaters in the attic. Right there, this little device I'm pulling out that I'm moving around. This is the uh, device that holds the small kind of glass crystal that holds the uh, the uh, safety device in place. And again, once that device is the glass is broken from the being overheated. Uh, it will shut the, the water heater down uh, immediately. It's probably one of them. I, I'd say probably best safety device that I've seen because it works so quick. But it do, it will, and it does. It throws a lot of plumbers off because we're used to the uh, a lot of the standard ones where the safety device is um, built in on the side or <clears throat> in the gas control valve itself. That little
switch back there, you can see me pushing down on it. And what I'm doing is putting the uh, safety device back in place. And I'm going to have to squeeze down on that rod back there. And spin it around to where it will lock in place. And now the device will be set and ready for the water heater to operate. And it is kind of tricky, especially when you're uh, working in the attic. And sometimes you don't have a lot of space. People have a lot of stuff around. Um, so it's kind of, it's kind of, and and I'm right-handed, and this is, uh, if I was left-handed, it'd be a little easy right now. <laughs> Position this flashlight in the best position so that I can give you the best view that I can give you of the uh, spot where this uh, safety device goes. This is the uh, safety device with the little glass tubing. It looks like a little fuse. There's a closer look. Here's a picture of it. That glass tube holds a little bit of oil. I'm not sure what the substance is. You can see on the previous one where you see uh, this is not the same as the one that I'm working on now, but you've you seen the shard glass that was laying out across the uh, deck. This is what it looks like once it's in place. This is a close-up view. This is a picture that I got off the internet. And now it's time to put the uh, burner assembly, the uh, pilot assembly, uh, everything back that goes into the uh, combustion chamber. This right here, oh man, I love this. Uh, this was a great idea that Ring came up with with the uh, gasket seal to uh, install back in place. Uh, I'm going to show you a little. Let me show you more of a closer look where you can see the uh, small little magnets. See the little magnets right there? Okay. So once you flip that over and flip it in place, those magnets will hold it right in place and you don't really worry about it moving around on you. So uh, I thought that was pretty clever. See, it holds it right in place. If you've done water heaters before, you know that sometimes putting this little plate back in place can be a little, a little difficult, but um, they've made this pretty easy with the uh, magnetic um, uh, gasket. It makes it a lot easier. It holds it in place, so you don't have to fight trying to hold the gasket in place and screw 
the uh, plate down. And, uh, by the way, the uh, camera I was using um, started, my, it ran out of memory. And so now I'm recording the rest of this with my phone. So I apologize if the quality's not there. And right here is where we're connecting the igniter. And this fat tube right here, that's the uh, gas tube. Well, I'm sorry, back to the small copper looking one. This is the uh, thermal coupling that goes into the uh, combustion chamber. And the thermal coupling, the way it works, uh, once you get the uh, small pilot part lit, the burner it burns against the uh, thermal coupling and after a minute or so that small thermal coupling starts to uh, generate a small amount of electricity and that small amount like that small current operates that gas control valve and this bigger tubing here is for the uh, main gas line where the main burner all the flames are coming out at This tube, the last tube to go in, this is the tube that goes to the pilot light itself. And it's just a small amount of gas that goes through here to keep the pilot lit.
we're turning the gas to the water heater on right here This is the uh, pilot button that we're going to hold down and we're going to hit the uh, ignited switch right here on the uh, right hand side. And right now I'm holding it down just to kind of uh, get some of the air out of the line and get some gas down into the uh, chamber area uh, because as uh, long as there's air in here it's going to be very difficult to light so we're going to get the air out of here. Now there's going to be a few times that I'm going to cut the light off in the attic, the uh, flashlight, uh, and that's only so that you can see the uh, pallet, the igniter. Uh, it makes it a little easier to uh, light the water heater, at least to me it does. Uh, you can see the uh, it, it, when it's lit. but I'm not showing you the uh, spark there you go there's the spark okay And now we need to give it a little gas. Uh, now that you have seen the igniter ignite. Now you can see the uh, pilot is lit, and if you look real close, well, you can't see it now, but if you look real close, you can see it's burning up against the uh, thermal coupling. And I, you know, I guess it's held this down long enough, and it should be ready to uh, turn on the main burners and start heating the uh, water heater up. And once that gets to going, there we go. We're looking at about 30, 45 minutes for the water to heat up and be ready to use. I hope you enjoyed the video and hope that it was very helpful. And if you have a Bradford White water heater, I have a video on that also. Again, same operations, different components. Thank you for watching.